Malcolm. Peace, peace, family. I'm here in the Gallery of Mall, Buffalo, New York, with Jennifer and Alex. And we're doing an interview in regards to Christmas and, you know, why people celebrate Christmas. And so that being said, uh, each of you or either one of you, if you would just explain what Christmas means to you and why you celebrate it. Oh, well, it's my favorite holiday, and I just love celebrating it with my family every year. Shit. <laughs> Same thing as that. He in it for the presents. <laughs> um, okay, a, a part of this interview and a part of uh, what I like to do is I like to, I believe in the... Uh, the evolution of humanity and consciousness and all of that type of stuff. And so in regards to Christmas, um, I just wanted to ask you guys, are you familiar with, let's say, the history of Christmas or the origins of Christmas? The birth of Jesus Christ. Shit. Shit. Okay, well, um, I would I kind of say I agree with you, but um, if you want to, you can flip through this uh, notebook. And so what I've done is I went and researched some Christmas facts that I'll go over with you. And so this right here is a deity titled Krampus. Have you ever heard of Krampus? No. Okay, Krampus is a Germanic and European uh, deity out of their folklore, as you can see right here. So I went and did the research for you. It's factual. I didn't Photoshop this. This is an actual festival uh, that's celebrated in Europe and Germany. This is on December 25th, where the original Santa Claus, which was considered Satan, was a demonic deity which came and basically kidnapped children. And so, as we go through this, we can do this very quickly. All right, this deity was based off of the Baphomet. As you can see here, it looks just like the Baphomet. Now, uh, you can see in the original sack of this deity, instead of presents, it was children in there. And so, what this deity would do around this time is come and steal the children. So, like, even we see that uh, Christmas tree over there. Cameraman, if you want to pan and get that Christmas tree. So... Uh, even we see that Christmas, we see that Christmas tree over there. That's actually symbolic to a phallus. So you got the phallus here, the ribbons and the ornaments on the tree is supposed to uh, symbolize male sperm, and then the balls on the tree are supposed to symbolize the testicles. So the sitting on Santa Claus lap and asking Santa Claus for gifts and presents is actually a pedophilic ritual, which comes from uh, a Roman. Uh, ritual or I mean excuse me a Roman celebration that was known as Saturnalia where the rich Roman people would give gifts to the parents and kids so that they can basically have sex with their kids so running through this right running through this here's a uh, actual painting of the Roman Saturnalia day so you know I'm not making this stuff up and here's actual Greek paintings you see the little boy sitting on his grown man's lap so I'm not making this up these are actually off of artifacts that are that are in museums and so uh, the reason I have this Baphomet next to the Christmas tree and the five-point star, which you see on Baphomet's head, is because this is symbolic to uh, Lucifer. The god of Freemasonry is Lucifer, and these are the people who made this holiday up. So the light at the top of the tree is symbolic to Lucifer because they say Lucifer is the beholder of light. That's why you see the torch on top of Baphomet's head. And so continuing through, uh, as innocent as this looks and as much as we love this, this is ritualistic too, even down to the logs. These logs are called Yule logs, and these logs were symbolic to sacrifice, where for 12 days they would actually burn children and sacrifice them by fire. So this is why they tell you on Christmas you should save a piece of your log and take it to next year. And so, uh, continuing through, even the mistletoe, right? The etymological roots of the word mistletoe is uh, poop on a stick. And, you know, I don't really want to go into that. I don't want to offend anybody, but this, I believe this Greek... A depiction of two men, you know, I believe it is it, self-explanatory. So even kissing under the mistletoe and things like that, you know, they have they have their roots. And so flipping through, right, getting through this as fast as possible, right? Here's that Yule log I was telling you about and its pagan roots. Uh, continuing through, even Merry Christmas, right? As innocent as this sounds, and we want to say I wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry means to be cheerful or happy. Mass or Mass is a sacrifice. See, in religious usage means death or sacrifice. So when we tell somebody Merry Christmas, Christ is your consciousness, they're telling you happy sacrificing yourself. So, uh, continuing on as we get to the end. Old Nick, as you can see in the... Um, Miriam and Webster's dictionary, Old Nick is another word for devil or Satan or Lucifer. So when you call uh, Old Saint Nick or that Santa Claus we just seen walk by, Old Saint Nick, you're really saying Lucifer or Satan. So this came about because when the Catholic Church wanted to bring that 
Krampus, you know, celebration over here, they couldn't just introduce it to people like me and you the way that we just seen it. So they had to gloss it up, pretty it up, and remix it. So instead of it being a horned demon, aka Lucifer, that steals children, it's an innocent old man who gives presents and gifts to children in the middle of the night while you're not up doing whatever God knows what with your children. So even uh, holiday, right? Holiday, when you etymologically break it down, goes into holy day. Holy is what? A day denoted to a God. Not They didn't specifically say what God. And then day is a procession of time with an existence. And so holiday season is the day denoted to the God of Freemasonry, which actually is Lucifer. So continuing on, because I want to rush through this. This is Fortnite. I don't know if you play Fortnite, but the reason I put this in here is because I play Fortnite. So the reason I put this in here is to show you even Fortnite knows. This is from last year when you were able to buy that Krampus skin, and it was around Christmas. So this was just to show you that, you know, even the makers of Fortnite are aware of who the original Santa Claus deity was and what Christmas was about. Uh, typoglemia is the ability of the human brain to understand words, even if the first letter or the last letter is misplaced. For example, the word words, if you take the S off the back and put it in the front, it spells swords. I don't know if you're religious or not, but that's why in the Bible it says the tongue is mightier than the sword. And so when you take Santa and you put the N on the back, it spells Satan. And so, keeping it moving, here, even when we, oh, I skipped the page. Keeping it moving, this was the original Santa Claus, and you see him dragging all of the kids off to hell. And this was in what you would call, the, you know, some people believe hell is under the ground. And so they just remixed that, and they turned Krampus into Santa, or Satan into Santa, and now he takes the kids to the North Pole and gives them gifts. And so this is where the elves come from, and Santa's little helpers, and all of these people that are in the North Pole. They're really abducted kids. Here's another actual painting of Krampus taking these kids to hell. And so they couldn't bring that to us over here, and they just turned it into Santa Claus, you know, giving gifts and being cheerful and being gleeful. And so as we come to the end of this, here's just more imagery uh, proving... You know, the information I'm giving you, here's another picture of Krampus stuffing these kids in the bag. And then here's an image of Santa Claus giving kids gifts out of the bag. And so, um, as we come to the end of this, right, I don't know if you're religious or not, and um, I won't hold you guys up too longer. But the reason that I'm doing these public interviews is because I love people, and I think that people deserve to know the truth. And I think if we all know the truth, then we all have a fair shot at reaching our full human potentials. So I don't want to, you know, bring negativity into anybody's life. But honestly and fearfully and out of the most positive stance that I have approached you to with, I just want to know, do you feel the same about Christmas or what are your thoughts towards Christmas after I just gave you this quick and brief presentation? I don't know. That was weird. It's not what I would have ever thought. Yo, fuck Christmas. <laughs> it's better than shit. It's better than shit. Um, I appreciate you both two participating, you know, in this interview. And as you leave here, I'm not, I don't expect you not to celebrate Christmas or be, or be with your family as you already plan to do. But has this influenced you in any way to look into this more or seek certain changes? And if so, what changes has this influenced you to seek? Probably look into it more. I don't know about changes, but. I appreciate it. You? Got me all fucked up, bro. I got him all fucked up. Listen, I want to thank you two both for your participation and Merry Christmas.